All right, it is 2.15, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, friends. Thanks for allowing me to guide you through the next 25 minutes of your DrupalCon Nashville experience. Welcome to Next Level Twig. Uh, in this presentation, we're going to be discussing getting extra functionality out of your Twig templates so you can really take control of how your website renders. I'm Will Long. I'm a Chicago-based Drupal developer. Uh, I'm a co-founder of My Drop Wizard with Dave and Elliot. Uh, we do uh, long-term support for Drupal 6, but we also do support for Drupal 7 and 8. We also have a round earth platform, Drupal 8 plus Civi CRM. Uh, come see us in booth 818. Uh, we'll be there for the rest of the events. Um, I'm a Drupal consultant, so do a lot of back-end development. Um, do hands-on custom development, as well as consulting uh, to help agencies maximize the results from the development team. And you can find me at Karasai on Twitter, Drupal.org, and other various places around the internet. All right, so we are here to talk about Twig, um, specifically about some of the limitations of the Drupal Twig implementation and how to conquer them. Twig is a complex system and has a lot of very useful tools that make template authoring simpler and safer. Um, a lot of the things that we could achieve with PHP template and D7 are not possible with the Drupal 8's default Twig implementation. Uh, these uh, hurdles we encounter are not necessarily limitations with Twig itself, but rather just holes in the implementation that we have with Drupal, and we can e easily fill those voids. Uh, most of the limitations are due to a lack of access and freedom within the templating mechanism itself. Uh, for instance, you can only render values passed to the template. There's no access to context or global data or the ability to load additional data. There's no access to call outside functions to process the data, which itself is a blessing and a curse. So we can't perform <coughs> database queries directly from the templates. That's a good thing. But also, we can't access safe and convenient things that would actually help us do the rendering of our templates. Uh, there's even very limited access to calling methods on classes and objects. Um, so your entities that get past your templates, there's a uh, very selective whitelist of methods that you can call on there, the label, the ID, for instance. So if the, that entity itself has business logic built into it, which is really a sensible place to put stuff like that, um, you can't use that in the templates themselves. Uh, Twig allows conditionals. Uh, we've all seen this, the if, then, the looping, fours, and whatnot. Um, so the, it's got functionality to do things like that, but it gets messy very quickly, especially when we have complex logic and we have like deeply nested logic. Um, it's also common to see the same functionality duplicated numerous times through all the templates. Uh, sometimes we'll see things repeated for every display mode, for every entity and bundle, um, just all throughout our themes. Uh, previous versions of Drupal, we could get around this because we had the ability to add PHP directly into the template. Uh, we no longer have that ability with Twig, which we, we just discussed is good and bad, but uh, we can get around that with uh, the Twig extensions. So, Twig extensions add functionality to the Twig environment mm -hmm. that allow us to utilize more powerful backend functionality while still operating within the constructs of Twig. So all the, all the good stuff we get from Twig, we have the ability to keep that and then add our own functionality into it also. Uh, Twig extensions allow a number of customizations to the Twig environment, but the main crux of what we're covering here are filters and functions. Uh, filters transform the value passed into something else. Uh, this is uh, example code that's on the um, Drupal.org page that describes filters and functions. So we look at the uh, view all content rendering in the first example. Um, here we're passing a literal string to it, and then we're passing it through the T filter, which then translates it. So this is an example of a twig filter. Um, the example of a twig function would be the link from the same example. We're using the path function to take the path of the front page view and to get the URL to that, and we're going to use it as the href for the destination in the template. Core provides a handful of useful filters. Um, these would be used with the same syntax we just saw. Um, the, the filter, um, the value we're going to filter at the beginning, and we have the vertical pipe, and then we have the filter itself. 
There are also a few functions uh, provided by core. Uh, these are all fairly straightforward. Um, if you've been working with the, the Twig tablets of core, I'm sure you've seen these filters and functions uh, th throughout the templates. Uh, so as we saw, uh, Core provides useful filters and functions, but it's not necessarily a comprehensive set um, to really get the functionality we need to do some uh, efficient theming. Uh, so let's take a look at some contrib options. Twig Tweak is probably the most widely used module for providing additional Twig functionality. So this is, uh, Twig Tweak um, has a set of filters and functions. Um, you can see the filters here that it provides. Um, most of these are probably familiar if you've been working with Drupal for any time. Uh, you can see it even provides a throwback to our nemesis, the PHP filter. Um, luckily, this is disabled by default, so you have to um, proactively go in and turn on that functionality. Um, the, the image style is useful. I've written similar implementations to this uh, before this was available as a part of Twig Tweak. Uh, the check markup runs it through an input format, so if you've got input formats set up to process your text, do whatever before it um, hits your web page. You can do that right from your templates. And then there's also a view filter, which um, can take either an entity or a field, and then it will render it right in the template. Uh, Twig Tweak also provides a whole slew of functions. Uh, some of these are quite literally duplicates of the filters we just saw. So the same functionality is callable via either syntax. Um, so you could do it uh, with the pipe and the filter, or you could do it through a, a function that we pass arguments like this. Um, the, it's got functions for inserting views, forms, images, uh, rendering blocks and regions, and uh, templates where those aren't necessarily available to you. Uh, you can load arbitrary entities and access fields on arbitrary entities. Um, you can work with config, uh, links, and um, debugging of values in your Twig templates. Uh, take a look at the Twig Tweak project page for additional information. There's a cheat sheet that will talk you th through exactly how these work, what arguments they need to work, and how to get the most out of those. Um, and also related to debugging, um, who in here uses the Devel module? Okay, I feel better. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm not even sure how I found it, but at some point uh, it came to me that uh, Devel actually provides a Twig extension that provides a few things, uh, one of which is a breakpoint, an xDebug breakpoint. So you can uh, just throw that right into your template and your xDebug debugger will stop in the middle of your template as it renders and you can see what values are available for you. Um, so that, that was incredibly helpful to me as I started my journey into Twig was to be able to stop it in its tracks and see what exactly it was I had to work with. Um, in terms of Drupal modules, there's also the Twig extension Drupal module, which provides integration for the Twig extensions project into Drupal's Twig environment. So the uh, Twig extensions project is not a uh, Drupal project, it's a uh, project that's supported by the maintainers of Twig itself and is very popular among uh, PHP at large. Um, it's reported at 22 million downloads, so it's, it's a thing that people use. Um, it provides various filters and functions to handle arrays, dates, internet, I'll get it, internationalization in text. So what do we do when we want to get more out of Twig? If you're a developer like me, you're, you're going to roll your own. So there's two basic parts to creating a Twig extension. The first part is to add a service definition. So here is the example from the Twig Tweak module. Um, there's really nothing all that special about it. It's just a very standard service definition. Uh, the main uh, point of this is it's tagged with the twig.extension tag, and by doing that, it allows Twig to find your extension. So all, all of the Twig extensions are tagged like that. Um, Twig uh, finds all the services that are tagged like that and <coughs> automatically utilizes them in the, uh, Drupal's Twig environment. Uh, next, we'll actually need to create the class we just added to that service file. Uh, it's just a regular PHP class. Um, it, you're going to extend the abstract Twig extension class. It's got basically empty implementations for all the methods it needs. Um, from there, you just define which filters you're, you're going to provide and which functions you're going to provide. Um, uh, the, the actual uh, return value of these is an array of either filter or function objects and that the filter and function objects are essentially just relations between the twig syntax and then the, the code that gets executed when that twig is processed. 
So here's the implementation from the Twig Tweak. Uh, once again, you're just providing an array of the filters that you're making available to the TD templates. The first argument is the name of the filters. So that's the part after the pipe. Um, the second argument is the code that you're sending into the filter. Uh, filters um, optionally can take a set of parameters also in a kind of similar syntax to functions. Uh, these examples all call methods that are contained in the Twig extension. Uh, that's what you're seeing with the array syntax. Um, that first, uh, the first element in the array is this, referring to the class itself, which is the Twig extension, and then the method that it calls. Um, it's also possible to call a function directly. And then the, the output of the code that gets called just needs to return a string or anything that can be cast to a string. So the functions method is very similar to the get filters method, except it returns function objects. Um, you can see, once again, it's got the, the name as the first argument, and then the code that's going to get called as the second argument. Um, and if you look at the top two elements, they, these are examples for embedding a view and accessing a view's result. These call PHP functions uh, directly from the view's module code. Just because we now have the ability to do more with Twig doesn't always mean we should. Um, so here's a few thoughts on how to do Twig extensions the right way to really um, get the most out of them and also uh, do it in a sustainable manner. So uh, start off by using filters and functions for keeping things simple. Uh, move complex logic out of your templates and into your Twig extensions or elsewhere. Um, raw PHP is generally easier to read for humans and easier to debug and test. Uh, consolidate your logic as much as possible. This uh, notion isn't uh, specific to Twig. It's ideal to only ever have one implementation of any uh, particular function or algorithm. Uh, if your logic is specific to rendering, it may make sense to put it in the Twig extension. Um, otherwise, it's probably more useful to put that logic somewhere that it can be used elsewhere in your code base, uh, like a service, for instance. Uh, then you could expose that service to your templates via a custom filter that is essentially just a wrapper passing off to the call to the code where it lives. Um, also, maybe more of a pet peeve, but as a best practice to help future-proof your templates, um, I, I think it's best to access data directly off of your entities. Uh, so for instance, in your node templates, um, access the node variable, not the content variable. Uh, it's inefficient to render the content of the field value and then strip it back down to the original value. Um, using the rendered field value also leaves you vulnerable to unexpected changes to the way the field renders over time. So um, updates to uh, modules or even other templates and things like that could impact the way your field renders, which would then impact the values that you're using in your twig. But most of all, I'm sure some of you out there are feeling like they've given you a, a big old hammer and everything is looking like a nail right now. Um, don't get crazy with it. Um, keep in mind that when you add filters and functions to your templates, uh, the extension is then uh, quite literally a dependency of your templates. So this custom extension that you've written um, is necessary for your template to function. Um, you're effectively tying your templates to Drupal and tying them to that uh, custom extension. Anywhere your template gets used, uh, your extension must also be available. Uh, a lot of cases this may be okay if you're just running Drupal on its own um, and no plan to reuse these templates on other projects or outside of Drupal or anything like that. It's probably a, a usable scenario to go a little nuts with the templates and, and the functions and filters provided by the extension. Um, but if your templates are shared with other parts of your development process, particularly like a style guide or a component library, you want to find a way to suitably abstract that functionality out of the extension or find a way to make that extension available in all these other places that are going to use the templates. So I'm going to start wrapping it up now. Uh, here's a list of the resources I've mentioned. Uh, you can find the raw documentation for Twig that covers filters and functions and a number of other things um, in, in more detail uh, on the uh, Twig documentation. Uh, just a, a note, uh, Drupal is using Twig version, I believe it's 1.35 right now. Um, the most current version is 2, so you may have to click your way back 
into the proper version of documentation. Um, so these links are on the uh, uh, sl uh, session page on the DrupalCon website, and then I will also get these uh, slides up shortly if you'd like to review them later. All right, are there any questions? Yes. Can you, give me a, can you give me a practical example of some of the extensions that you can uh, so the, the, the most practical example of, of one that I've done custom was the image style one. So if we wanted the URL to a specific image style, um, you would write a, a Twig extension that uses the image style code from Drupal core to get that URL and provide it to your template. Um, what I was mentioning when I was covering some of the Twig Tweak stuff is that uh, Twig Tweak actually provides that now. So in the past it didn't used to, but uh, recently it's been added. So you have that functionality to get URLs to the image style right in your template. Um, there's also a number of other uh, functions I've written. Um, we, we saw how the uh, views Im embedded stuff provided by Twig Tweak. Um, so, so what I've done there is I've wrote some very simple basic stuff that allow you to take um, like a list of arguments. So take like, if, for instance, you had an entity reference field and you wanted to pass those into a view, um, you, it would be able to collect the, the IDs of the entities, collapse them into a string that is an acceptable views argument um, for a views and or a views or type of contextual filter, and then it would, it would uh, execute the view with that argument. Yes? Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've been using uh, Twig uh, more and more for uh, trying to put some logic in places where it doesn't, like in the UI in certain areas. Um, so uh, I just want to say I'm doing a boff tomorrow from one to two upstairs on uh, extending Twig to other places, like uh, using it in uh, content moderation notifications. Uh, so you can have conditional logic um, and uh, using it as an alternative to token, um, possibly doing it with uh, like some dynamic views filters and some other tricks. So, so I'd put that out there if anybody wants to contribute to that discussion or effort. Very cool. Yes. Um, so so the, the question was, um, how does the uh, custom functionality relate uh, to caching? So um, adding aggressive filters and functions, um, if there's any concerns with the uh, caching of the output of that. I want to say generally, um, there's not a huge concern, but particularly with uh, th things like we saw with the Twig Tweak where it's implementing uh, views and different things like that. Those um, have their own caching built into them for one, but they also um, have, um, they are presented back to the template as uh, like a, a renderable item, meaning they have their own uh, caching metadata built in to, their, to, to the output from the views code, and at that point that will bubble up to the page level as needed. Um, I, I think the use case for a lot of this is, is really just taking duplicate code out of your templates um, so if you've got some process, um, probably mostly business related, if you say you've got two, two fields on your entity, you kind of have a main one and then a secondary one, and one has precedence over the other, you just want to put them in your template. So if one's there, you, it gets used. If not, it falls back to the other one. Um, this would be a way to do it. And you'd be able to uh, consolidate that logic into other places where it gets used. So you'd use the Twig extension to implement it in your templates, but that would really just call other code that gets used elsewhere. Right. So one of the strategies for uh, avoiding going nuts with the sprinkles is to use Twig includes. So on your uh, like an entity template, for instance, um, you wouldn't uh, actually render markup through there. You would basically just use that to kind of set up variables and then you would include the actual template that you want to use the variables. So when you're setting up the variables, you call all of your Drupal specific twig functions and then pass that off to the very like generic template.
So we had some type of mind reading happen between <laughs> the questions. Um, so the, the, the question was, uh, um, how does this relate to pre-processing in D7? Uh, so pre-processing still is available in D8. Um, I, I think the kind of general consensus is that it's just clunkier than being able to put just a little piece of functionality into your Twig template. Um, so I mean, you can do whatever you want with the pre-process just like it was, um, but in terms of reusing it across different templates and things like that, at that point, you then have to implement a pre-process hook for each case of this. Um, and even then, you, you could consolidate that function that, to where all these number of pre-process functions calls, to, it would still consolidate it, but you still have to implement all those hooks in your theme. And then the, the, the Twig extension is also not tied to your theme. So if, if, if it needed to work across multiple themes or multiple projects or whatnot, it, it could certainly do so. Um, just wondering if you could dig into the access property or not accessing the entities rendered and the values. Like, can you dig into that a bit more? Sure. So, uh, in the core templates, what, what we see a lot is um, content dot whatever. Um, and, and I guess I should back up a bit. A lot of them just render the content as a whole. So, the content is just an array of the things that are renderable in the content. So the, when you render the entity, it runs it through the entity view mechanism, which basically just turns the entity into a giant renderable array, and that's what goes into content. Um, so um, when I was discussing the node variable, that's the actual node entity. Um, when you work with it, you set the properties on it, set field values on it, things like that. The content var variable is that renderable version of the entity that has all the fields set up per how you have it configured in the UI. Did that answer the question? Yeah, no, I guess it's just like challenges with kit and getting those values sometimes. You know, you're, you're struggling trying to find what value to print. Sure. And you're like, oh, this works. But sometimes it's like, is it the right one or the wrong one? So I find it's always challenging to kind of. Sure. It, so the, the, the follow up was that it can be challenging to find uh, what, what the heck it is you're looking for. to. For the, for the value, right? Is that yeah. the correct? Um, um, I found there's a lot of trial and error in the beginning. Uh, you just kind of pick it up over time. Um, but, but also, it, it's, it's similar to how you would do it in PHP code in the back end. It's the same structure. It's just with the dot notation instead of using the objects and the properties and methods on the object. Okay. All right. All right. I appreciate everybody for coming. Uh, please do leave some feedback on the session node. There's the, the evaluations that are there. Uh, I'd appreciate feedback, positive, negative, whichever. I, I'm not gonna hurt my feelings. Um, it's on the session page on the DrupalCon website. And have a great rest of you, DrupalCon. Thank you.